I bought a uh, extender for my cob grill and what it does is it goes on here and allows you to cook larger or taller uh, like roasts and chickens and things like that and it happened to come I didn't realize it but it came with this little gadget that uh, goes together and snaps in the holes here and you can roast a chicken on it uh, like a beer can chicken of course there's no beer can but uh, I'm going to give it a try today so that's what the video is about hope you enjoy it well the first thing I need to do is mix up my brine I'll be brining this chicken uh, overnight probably even closer to 20 hours before uh, I, I get started cooking it. I think with chicken, the longer the better it sits in the brine. I think at least 12 hours, but I'm gonna even go more than that. My brine is very simple. I start off with two cups of water. And then I have a half a cup of kosher salt. And a, I mean that's, that was sugar, half a cup of sugar, granulated sugar, and then a third cup of kosher salt. And then we'll whisk that up to get the salt and sugar dissolved. Since the water's cold, it sometimes takes a little while to do that. Okay, it's clearing up, it looks like it's about it. And then to that, I'm going to add about, this is a 24 ounce bottle of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And I'm not going to use that whole thing, I'm going to add about half that bottle and I'll probably drink the other half. So, half would be about there, so down we go. Any kind of beer or stout or whatever, I think the stronger the beer, the more the flavor it's going to impart. That's about half. The rest is going to be for the chef. Give that a stir. I'm going to put that over here and I'm going to get the chicken. My chicken today is just about four pounds, of, maybe just a little over four pounds. And I'm going to have to shoehorn it into a uh, one gallon plastic bag because I'm all out of the bigger ones. I thought I had another one left, but I don't. But I think I can get it in there. With a little effort. I won't use all that brine in a small bag like that, but there we go. And then add the brine. Without spilling it all over the place. Oh yeah, it's all gonna go in there. much of the air out as I can. Slash it around in there. And I will place that in the refrigerator uh, for, in my case, probably close to 20 hours. So I'll see you when the time comes. Okay, it's been about uh, 18 hours, maybe 18 and a half hours. I flipped it over once or twice and I'm afraid my bag leaked, but I uh, had it in this bowl so I didn't really lose any. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a mess getting it out of here. Not too bad. So let's get it out of the brine. It 
smells good. Yeah, I wish I had my big bag. It'd be a lot easier. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse this off, get some of the excess brine off it. And uh, I'll get some paper towels to pat it dry and get a rub on it. Today is uh, Tango Spice Chicken and Rib Rub, and this stuff is very good. We we'll put a good heavy coat on. Add it in. Let me open that up over right here. Nothing's coming out. There we go. Get it coated real good. Try to get some inside there. Okay, under the legs, in the armpits, both sides. Okay, and then as you can see, I brought along the stand. And we'll put this thing on the stand. Now, I'm going to get the grill fired up and get this baby going. Okay, today I'm using one of these uh, Loki barbecue briquettes. I bought uh, a couple of packs of them, and I'm not real crazy about them, uh, but they do work, and I'm trying to use them up, so that's the main reason I'm, I'm using it. I'm going to put a uh, cup of uh, water and lemon juice into the moat down here just to add some moisture to the cook and also infuse a little flavor with the lemon juice. The lemon juice settled at the bottom here. It holds a little more than a cup. I put a cup in. And then to light her up you just get it started in the center. Start spitting. And in about 15 minutes we'll be ready to cook. Okay, good and hot now. I got two pieces of uh, maple I'm going to put on there to add a little smoke. And I'm going to get the chicken. Here comes the beast. And put my extender on, my lid. Okay, we got good uh, smoke coming out of the top from the maple wood. And I'm guessing this is going to take about an hour to an hour and a half to cook. Um, I'll be looking for a temperature, internal temperature of about 165 degrees in the uh, thigh. I'm going to be uh, taking that with a instant read thermometer. After maybe about an hour I'll check it and see how we're doing and then I'll from there know a little closer how much longer it'll take. Okay, now all we got to do is wait for it to cook. Okay, it's time for a temperature check here. Got my instant read thermometer. Oh boy, it's looking good. I'm going to shove that down into the thigh, but I'm going to do it from up here so that I. Oops, I hit the bone. There we go. Okay, we're at 146. So we got a ways to go yet. And when you weren't looking, I threw a couple. 
baked potatoes in there too just to have a little something with the chicken. Okay, cover it back up and come back in a half hour and check it again. Okay, it's been another half hour and we're going to check it again. Oh boy, that's looking really good now. Look at that. See if you can find that same hole. Okay, we're up to 155, 156. Nice thing about these instant reeds is if you pull it up, you can get the, the temperature all the way up. So we're we're almost done. I thought it would be done by now, but that's okay. It's going to going to go a little bit longer and taste all the better for it. Well, I'm thinking this is going to be it. So I got the platter out. Let us try a temp. Oh yes, there we go, 168, 168, 162, 165, and the rest. Okay, that's perfect. Now, I have my gloves here. I'm going to lift this right off of the rack. hope it didn't stick. It did stick a little bit. There we go. I'm going to leave the potatoes in for a little while. Once well, this I'm going to rest it inside, I'm going to put an aluminum foil tent over it and rest it for about uh, 15 minutes and then carve it up and eat. Okay, it's rested about 10 minutes, or uh, I should say 15 minutes. Let's take the tin foil off and see what we got here. Oh boy. Does that look good? Yum, yum, yum. There's a nice wing, which I think I'm going to eat. And the leg is going to go to my wife because that's what her favorite is. Skin is nice and crispy. That's both our favorites. Now let's try the white meat. It's hot. Oh, juicy and tender as can be. Let's give it a try here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is super. Believe me, you won't be disappointed if you take the time to brine your next chicken.